Hello everyone and welcome to this month's Health Extension Advocacy Research and Teaching Initiatives Heart Bunch video. Today we're going to be talking about resiliency in the new year and to get us started I'm going to pass it over to Gabby. Thanks Ashley. So 2020 has no doubt brought on stress in various forms and intensities but we don't have to go into 2021 unprepared. Um, you may have heard the word resiliency and imagine strength and ability and not to be swayed by challenges, but it's really more about being able to handle that stress, like to go with the flow. And it's something that we all possess in one form or another, but it is also something that we can learn. Resilience is the process of adapting quickly in the face of adversity, trauma, tragedy, um, threats or you know significant sources of stress. And it doesn't mean that stress does not exist, but it does add to our toolbox of ways to cope with it and adapt to stressful events. So when we talk about the new year, it is partially within the context of COVID, but it can also be used every day in our interactions with ourselves and also others. So what we're gonna to introduce today are um, six competencies of resilience, and these are provided by uh, PERMA, the PERMA's theory of well-being. And we have some resources at the end if you'd like to learn more about that. But we're going to go through the six competencies. And the first competency of resilience is connection. And that's basically what it sounds like. We pretty much understand what connection is, but it's really about seeking relationships and connections with others. And that is really a strong predictor of resilience. Um, it is deals with connecting with ourselves and, and others as well. And some of the strategies that that uh, you can think about or you can try to you you can incorporate into this this competency of of connection is about communicating effectively with others so really listening to people um you know listening to what they say not always providing advice but you know if if advice is not needed just listening to them being attentive paying attention um, helping others achieve success and also just celebrating other people's successes as well is really important, is really a, a good strategy for developing connection, developing social support and building trust by example. So, you know, you're building trust with others, whether it's colleagues, whether it's coworkers, whether it's your family and friends, but, but doing things, leading by example and building trust that way, being true to your real self, you know, you know, make sure that your actions um, make sure that your actions mimic your, your, your beliefs and your values. And also just remembering not to go it alone, ask for help, take advantage of those connections that you have, those relationships that you have, and, and just, just, um, ask for help whenever you need it. So I'm going to pass it on to Rachel to talk about the next competency. Thanks, Gabby. Um, I'll be talking about optimism, and that's your ability to notice and expect positive things, um, and additionally to focus on what you can control, um, and then take purposeful action to uh, feel more optimistic. So just a few brief strategies. Um, there might be things that you notice that you're encountering that uh, make you less optimistic about the world, uh, such as the news. So if you find yourself becoming overwhelmed or uh, generally pessimistic by things, it might be it might be good every now and then to turn off or limit your uh, news or social media intake. Um, another strategy is spending time with positive people. I know I always feel uplifted uh, when I'm around someone who, who is really positive. One strategy that I use um, is journaling and uh, journaling in general is, is really great um, for being more optimistic, but you can also specifically keep a gratitude journal uh, to notice and, uh, and call out the things in your life that, that are going well and, and that you're grateful for. Um, and then the last is uh, accepting what you can and cannot control in life. Um, it's difficult sometimes and easy to dwell on uh, things that we can't control in our lives. But uh, those are a few strategies to be a little bit more optimistic. I'm going to pass it over to Tim. Well, thank you, Rachel. I'm going to speak just briefly about strength of character. Uh, strength of character is the ability to use one's strengths to engage authentically overcome challenges and create a life aligned with one's values. Take the moral high road, standing up for your beliefs, 
um, those are what strength of character involves. Um, and it's something at this time of, I think, COVID and all things that are occurring um, across the United States and the world, um, we really need to have that moral high road that we want to be involved with um, and take care of ourselves well. So five strength of character traits include altruism, empathy, integrity, respect, um, and being involved. So if you do have questions um, about your strength of character or would like to see what you're maybe getting yourself into when you begin thinking of that, um, please see some of the resources following this presentation. So thank you um, and I'll send you over to Matea. Hi, I'm gonna talk a little bit about self-regulation and self-regulation is essentially how you regulate your emotional response to different situations. So it's your ability to calm yourself down when you're upset and cheer yourself up when you're feeling down. So it can be helpful to think about how you personally react in different circumstances when different situations present themselves. How do you respond physically and mentally when something frustrating or stressful happens? Um, oftentimes we can react in a way that really can contribute to situations feeling even worse and uh, it doesn't have to be that way. So there are a lot of different strategies that can actually help with uh, self-regulation and uh, I'm going to kind of uh, talk through a, a, a few of them, but really it's finding something that works best for you. So a few different strategies that work for people are really reframing and practicing gratitude, finding things to be appreciative for in that moment, even when stressful or difficult things are happening. Um, maybe breathing exercises would work for you. Taking the, the, the chance to, to maybe get into a room or being in a quiet space and, and just paying attention to your breath. Um, mindfulness and uh, self-talk, humor, if, if that's what works for you. Uh, even things like muscle relaxation, meditation, yoga, um, walking. There are a lot of different strategies uh, that uh, really can take uh, and change your perspective slightly and, and help you regulate your emotional response a little bit better. So again, my recommendation is just to find a strategy that works best for you and also pay attention to how you're responding to different situations and consider, you know, what could I be doing that uh, might contribute to a, a, an even improved response? So uh, Marin, can you tell us a little bit about mental agility? Yeah, you bet. So when Gabby introduced the topic of resilience, she started by defining it as the process of adapting quickly. And so really quick mental adaptation is the superpower of human happiness. So it's all about being able to see your situation differently in a way that helps you to respond to the problem in a positive way, in a way that's going to help you get where you want to be. So I'll just mention, I mean, there's cognitive behavioral strategies are awesome and there's a bunch of science behind how great they work. But I'll mention this one example to be a little bit motivating for us. So there's a story of this Holocaust survivor who was asked if she ever thinks about those days in the concentration camps. And she responded, oh yes, most days I wake up in the night from horrible images and nightmares of the camps. Can you imagine asking someone that question? Be like, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to make you think of it. And that must be terrible for you. That's how I'd respond, right? But the Holocaust survivor said, oh, no, no, no. It's all right because I wake up and I'm here. Just think of that way of viewing the world. So she's not, when the trauma comes to mind, that doesn't put her back in the trauma. That just reminds her to be grateful for where she is now. It's a beautiful story of mental agility. And if we practice that, that's just one of the things that's gonna help us to be resilient as we face life's challenges. Ashley, what about self-awareness? Thank you, Marin. I think self-awareness is one of these things that ties a lot of these different competencies together. Being self-aware is just noticing and experiencing yourself, right? So it is exactly what it sounds like. So noticing your thoughts, your feelings, your sensations, and then being able to reflect upon that. So being able to ask others, hey, how do you see this action that I'm doing, right? I'm trying to do something kind. Is it being perceived as kind? Getting some of that constructive feedback can be a way to become even more self-aware, as well as things like what have already been mentioned, like mindfulness and engaging in mindfulness to help rewire your mind. And like Marin mentioned with that mental agility, 
we can train our minds to think more positively and our outlooks to be more positively. And that actually rewires the gray matter in our brain. So we're able to seek that path more easily, even though it's really hard at the beginning to have that positive frame of mind. So self-awareness is one of those skills that you can practice in many, many ways. And again, like Matea said, you wanna find what works for you. Some other examples include walking, journaling, mindfulness, and just general activities that get you to be able to think about things for yourself. Again, gratitude is an excellent opportunity for that as well. And you can actually be on autopilot sometimes, right? I give the example of driving in a car and we get somewhere and we're like, oh my gosh, I have no idea how I got here, but I made it safely. That's autopilot, right? And that's not a great way to live our lives, even though it's adaptive sometimes, once we can start thinking about it and reflecting, it's really good to be able to have that more positive outlook. So we're actually steering and knowing where we're going, which direction we're heading. So I'm gonna close us out and just say thank you all for joining us again with our Heart Bunch video series. We hope that you all can be more resilient in the upcoming year. And if you would like to see this video and more, please visit us at extension.usu.edu forward slash heart. You can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And please check out these helpful resources and references to help you get started on your path to resiliency. Thanks everyone.